Today, we're going to use Arduino to create a $5 Wi-Fi backdoor on a Mac OS computer on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The goal of our attack today is to take a macOS computer and force it to connect to a rogue access point for the cost of about $5. Now the way we'll do this is to use a USB rubber ducky style device that's actually running Arduino and costs about $1, $1.50 on AliExpress. The second part of our attack will be using this ESP8266 based D1 mini board, which itself costs maybe $2, in order to create that access point so that the entire setup uses Arduino and we don't really have to spend very much money to capture the data connection of this macOS computer and do all sorts of bad stuff. Now, in our example, we'll be sending a simple web request, but we could scale this to do all sorts of nefarious things. And there's a number of advantages to being able to communicate over a local Wi-Fi link because we bypass a lot of firewalls, and we also make it so that we can arbitrarily cause this laptop to disconnect and reconnect to our rogue network. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need to have Arduino installed, and you, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you get confused because there will be a lot of details there. Once you have an ESP8266 type device along with a DigiSpark board, then we can begin. Now today we're going to be using some ducky script type principles with Arduino in order to use a really low cost hardware version of a traditional ducky script attack. Now the payload we're going to be creating relies on a couple macOS commands which will allow us to basically insert a Wi-Fi network into the preferred network list. And what that means is that the computer will trust it, automatically connect to it, and we can use that to do a variety of nefarious things. Now to get started, we need to look at the hardware we'll be using. In this case, we're going to be using a DigiSpark, and that requires a little bit of setting up. Now, a DigiSpark doesn't kind of, uh, how do I describe this? It doesn't really receive code the same way that a D1 Mini or any other ESP8266 type board receives code. You don't plug it in and then you know press upload because you need to press upload first. It basically has a bootloader that requires it to, after you plug it in, check to see if there's any code that needs to be uploaded and then basically receive the code and, and update itself. And it won't be constantly updating and it won't have serial the way that a other type of Arduino chip will. And that's just a limitation with its cheap form factor and the way it's put together. It's something that is worth dealing with, um, you know, if, if you are willing to you know, save some money and then deal with a couple of these little quirks that it has. So I recommend checking out the digistump.com slash digispark page. It is a good place to get started and it has a lot of the steps that we'll need to do in order to get this working. Now, the general thing we'll need to do is make sure that we have the correct uh, libraries installed in Arduino. And if we start on the wiki, we can see that the uh, first step is going to be to make sure that we have all of the stuff that we need added, which is the drivers and the libraries that the board relies on. Now, we'll need to, in Arduino, which you can download on your own because it's cross-platform and will be available for whatever you have, uh, need to add this JSON URL. And the place to do that in within Arduino is going to be under Preferences. And then within preferences, we can go to additional boards manager URL, click here, and then we can add the URL just like this. Now what doing this actually does is gives us the ability to add it when we go to tools, board, board manager, and then this will be a big list of uh, different boards we can add. If we add DigiSpark, once it's done downloading the list of indexes, Sorry, once this is finished downloading the platform index, we can, so many of them. See the Digistemp AVR, A, yeah, AVR boards, we can click on install. And once it's been installed, we can click on tools, board, and if we scroll down, select Digispark default 16.5 megahertz. 
Okay, so now we can write to the DigiSpark board. And one of the things we'll need to use is the digikeyboard.h. And this should be included by default. And in fact, it should also be one of the default sketches. Now, what we're gonna do today is use a example sketch we have for the ESP8266 called the Chicken Man game, which my friend and uh, I made for the Layer 1 security conference and a series of uh, Wi-Fi security hacking workshops we were doing. You can type chickenmangame.com if you want to check out this sketch. And today what we'll be using this for is a quick and easy way to set up a rogue access point and then have our computer be connecting to it. Now the point of this game is a little bit different from what we're using it for today, but we're going to use this sketch to basically create an access point that when we send a signal to it will effectively turn on an LED. So this is definitely different from the normal purpose of this game. Instead, what we're going to be using it for is creating a Wi-Fi network and then sending a request that will just light up an LED. Now, instead of this, we could have a server waiting that is serving up a phishing page or maybe sending information that we've stolen from the MacBook computer. But for now, we'll just use a simple example in order to illustrate how this works. Now, you can follow the instructions on the GitHub in order to set up the ESP8266. And on my computer, I already have it running. So I will go ahead and click on Tools, Port, and then I'll select the port it's connected to. I'm going to press Command Shift M and let's go ahead and see which network it's creating. All right, so it's created a network called Chicken Easy 6 and it's using this password. All right, so that's pretty easy for us to remember. I'll go ahead and copy this. And of course, this will be the name of whatever rogue network it is you want to create. So there's a lot of good resources online for finding out how to do things in command line. And on Mac OS, they, we can use airport commands in a terminal window in order to do things like disconnect from a network, reconnect to a network, and even add networks to your preferred network list. There's a couple of different ways of doing this, but the one that I've settled on is relatively simple because it does two things at once. It adds this network along with the password, and it doesn't really require a lot of information to do so because when it does this, it saves it as a preferred network or one that we've decided to trust and will actually automatically allow us to connect to it anytime that it's present without asking the user for a password or for permission. So the way that this is going to work is we'll basically use the DigiSpark uh, keyboard here. And this library will allow us to do things like send delays and keystrokes the same way that we would with a USB rubber ducky. But instead of loading this onto a bin file and then putting that on the SD card or on the micro SD card, we're going to just put this in an Arduino sketch and upload it directly. Now we can see that we need to supply the Wi-Fi name and the password. So the Wi-Fi name is going to be Chicken Easy 6. The password is going to be 12345678900. And that should be everything we need in order to connect to this network, wait for six seconds, and then after six seconds, send a post request in order to turn on the red LED. And again, this could be virtually anything. We could be piping system information or a profile of this computer, or we could be setting up a back door that downloads a payload from this URL instead. So we're going to be pushing this to the DigiSpark and we're assuming that at this point, we have a computer that we want to plug this DigiSpark into in order to infect it. And then we have a rogue Wi-Fi network in range that we're going to force that computer to connect to. And this is, again, something that we can do in the future as well. So if we connect, if we basically add this network to the preferred network list and tell the computer, hey, you should trust this in the future, we could, a year from now, provided they haven't deleted it, which most people never will, force them off of whatever network they're connected to, and they will connect to this rogue network that we've put into their uh, computer's memory uh, in preference to whichever networks are around them. And that's really cool because it means we can get a backdoor connection to their computer anytime we want, at least over Wi-Fi and at least with their data. Now, if we want to add something more complicated here, we can also add like a netcat backdoor. But again, that's outside the scope of this tutorial because we're just kind of keeping it simple with this, uh, with this hardware blend of Arduino for a Wi-Fi style attack. So we have this code we're going to put on our DigiSpark and in order to do that, I'll need to take my DigiSpark and put it into a adapter so that it will fit into the USB type C on this computer. Once I am ready to do so, I will go ahead and 
make sure that I have DigiSpark selected. Um, the port doesn't need to be this one, but we'll see if it works. And I'm gonna go ahead and press upload. And now it wants me to insert the device. All right, so as soon as I insert this, it should detect it. And if it does successfully detect it, it'll send the code and begin updating the DigiSpark. There we go. All right, so we flashed it. It's now running the payload. If we look, it is now waiting. It's opening a connection to this Wi-Fi network, and we should notice that our Wi-Fi should disconnect and reconnect to the rogue network. It's now posting a curl request to the rogue server that's being hosted on this rogue network, and you can see that we are getting content from that as well. So this is just a very simple example. We have the LED lit up on our board now, and the effect of this could be instead that we've sent over a bunch of password data, we could now be serving a phishing page, or we could have started a netcat backdoor and then downloaded a more advanced payload that would let an attacker start backdooring this computer and using it remotely. Now, of course, this would be a ducky script payload, so we would wait until someone was just not paying attention to their computer, and in a matter of just a couple of seconds, we'd be able to deploy this payload and get a Wi-Fi backdoor into their computer whenever we want. While the attack we executed today is fairly basic, there's a number of ways we can expand on it and make it more practical. Now, one of these attacks could be that the attacker doesn't know the password to the Wi-Fi network that the victim is connected to, and they want to learn it. So they create a ducky script, which creates a clone network and the preferred network list of the victim, so that as soon as they deauth the victim from the real Wi-Fi network, they connect to the cloned network and find a phishing page saying that their router is updating. As soon as they put in their password, then the attacker gets the password to the network and the victim gets connected back to their normal Wi-Fi network, none the wiser that suddenly they have a new guest on their network. Now, if you get confused while setting this up, you can check out the Nullbyte article in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. That's all we have for this episode, and we'll see you next time.